Greetings YouTube, Dark Swordsman here and I am back for more Dark Souls 1 and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on forward so let's just climb our way back up here, back up to the bridge now there are two ways in which we can approach the dragon first is going underneath the bridge here which is actually what we're going to do first of all and the reason we're going to go under the bridge is because um, there's actually a trick we can do to get ourselves a weapon oh crap where did he come from oh know where he came from. So we need to get rid of this spear in a sec. But basically once you've killed those two you can make your way across this little ledge here and then up through there. Um, but we're actually not going to do that. Instead what we're going to do is we place ourselves oops god Oops. Oh god. Oh, there we go. It's because I've been playing Demon Souls, the controls are slightly different. God. And the firing button for the arrows is slightly different. There we go. Oh. Move myself over a little bit. There we go. So we're going to need to hit the tail a few times, and once we break his tail. It will give us the Drake Sword. Now this is a good weapon to go for early stage in the game if you fail to get the Black Knight Sword. Although there will be another opportunity to get said Black Knight Sword very shortly. This shouldn't take too long. Oops. Fingers slipped over the button. So I'm not sure how many shots it actually takes. I suppose also it depends on the strength of your bow. I mean, you know, if you've taken the time to go gather some shards and level it up, then. Although I don't know if there's anything around here. Well, I say I don't know. It's more on the lines of I can't actually remember if there's anything here that gives shards. Which I'm the thinking you probably need to level up the bow that we're using right now um, and we are going to be leveling up this bow a bit later on um, because we're going to need to upgrade it in order to get hold of a really strong bow in fact it's probably well I deem it to be probably the strongest bow in the game I'm not 100% certain though on that so don't quote me on it obviously my fellow Dark Solars, if, if, if you know of a bow that is stronger than the bow that I'm going after, then do let me know when the time comes. But for now, we'll come back to that, because it will be a little while yet before we gain access.
Hopefully we should take his tail off very shortly. Obviously if we were using the sword against his tail we'd probably take it off very very quickly but unfortunately because of where his tail is positioned we ain't going to be able to do it. Now I have heard rumour of being able to glitch kill him from the top of the tower behind him. Now I don't know how accurate that is, although I believe one of my friends successfully did it, possibly, I can't remember. Um, basically I seem to recall someone shooting him in, uh, from said tower and the dragon fell off the bridge and instantly died. Um, but I'm not 100% certain on that, so don't quote me on it. Wow, this tail does not want to come off. Goodness gracious me. There we go. Right, so now I'm going to show you the other way to get across. Because we do want to activate the bonfire ideally, and we have to go in from this side to do so. So, what we need to do first of all is just roll across to this side of the bridge. He'll nuke everything off for us. And then what we're going to do is position ourselves. Oops, wrong button. Brain went into Demon Souls mode again. We're just going to fire one arrow. As he lands, we run past him, preferably without getting stuck on his blooming legs. Yeah, we died. That's because I got stuck on his legs. That's all right. It was bound to happen. It doesn't always go the way you want it to. And also on top of that, sometimes he can pull off that little bull crap that he does. Because, um, obviously, the biggest main way to, to, to beat him is to actually fight him on the bridge itself. But sometimes he will uh, bull crap and he will fly upwards like that and just flame grill the bridge and there's literally no you can do about it. You literally just have to accept it and die, basically. It is very frustrating, I know, but it, you know, it's, there is no else you can do. Sometimes you'll just walk along the bridge like he's doing right now. But once you get to this bonfire and light it, he should fly off. Now, obviously, he will come back. But for now, we can come back and collect these items now because he's gone for the moment. He won't be coming back for a little while. And let's just take a look at our new weapon. So right now we need 16 strength to wield it. So we're at 15 strength right now. Well, I've got some points to level up anyway, so we'll go ahead and deal with that now. Uh, and I think I'm going to chuck... Uh, I want to get my health bar up a bit as well, ideally. Right, let's go ahead and switch our weapons out. So here's the Drake Sword. And we'll just go ahead and... Open that. Uh, 
we'll leave him for now. There is another Black Knight up at the top of that tower, but right now I'm thinking it's probably not a wise decision to try and kill him. And I strongly believe that if we do try and take him on, it's going to resort in death, so I'm thinking we should probably avoid it. Yeah. Where did you come from? I don't know where that guy came from. There we go. Uh, right, so the first thing we want to do here is eliminate the archers because they will get in the blooming way if we don't. And the weapon we've got should one-shot everything here. Uh, grab the alluring skull, which isn't really that great of an item, if I'm honest. Now, as for the bull that's down there, I'm going to show you a little trick for dealing with him as well. So what we want to do is we want to irritate the hell out of him a minute, and then we basically want to just pin ourselves in the corner here. And if we do it right, we can get him caught in the fire. There we go, got him. As you can see, the fire is taking his health away for us nice and quickly. Basically, you just keep making him run into the fire if you can. There we go. The fire will kill him off really quick. Okay, so the guard there has shut the gate on us because we weren't quick enough, but that's fine. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just make our way down through here and through the underground passage. Now... Uh, be warned, this is a bit of an ambush situation. Oh, I missed. My arrows aren't reaching over the top, okay. So with this bit, don't just go ploughing in because obviously you've got this guy that was to the left, the other guy to the right, and basically this guy here that's just come back down is the one that ran up the stairs and basically he kites you in. And before you know it, you've been shredded by all of them at once. Oh, oh, I've got to say, for such small little daggers that they're using, they're doing have to do some damage. So we've got our mystery key, we'll use that later. So then we're going to make our way up this ladder. Uh, we'll just kill these two off a minute, because otherwise they'll get in the way. And then we've got a little bit of a balance beam to do here. Can't say as I'm a big fan of these balance beams, if I'm perfectly honest. Oh, oh, damn. That was me being impatient. Let's try that again. There we go. Soul of Lost Undead. And then we can just run back. Right. Up the next ladder and through the fog door on the right. Uh, there's no further items in here to be had. Follow round to the right here and then round to the left. You'll find a hide knight and behind him is our new shield that we're going to have and dang I managed to get a backstab off that doesn't happen very often backstabs are really difficult to get in this game I find well for me it is anyway uh, we'll just switch to the knight shield now we could also be really cheeky here and we can cheap shot the uh, other hide knight that's over here I'm not entirely sure as to how he just blocked that when he's, you know, facing the other way, but, you know. Oops. Alright, we'll make our way around. We'll be able to take him out easy enough anyway. Uh, so, up these stairs here then. Hey! <laughs> 
Oh god. <coughs> Not now. <coughs> oh. I always seem to sneeze at the most inconvenient timings. Time even. Oh. I don't know why I'm sneezing so much at the moment. Oh. Right, let me just respond to this message a second, folks. So next up then we're going to just take a left turn here, uh, there is an item over there but we'll get that in a minute, so I want to get rid of this guy first, so I don't want to risk aggro, long sword, and then we can just grab this lever here for opening the door, to give ourselves a shortcut so we don't have to keep going underneath, that should stay open now permanently. I believe. And then we get ourselves a halberd, which is relatively good for this stage in the game, I suppose. And there's some Titanite shards. Oh, God. Oh, he just parried me. I don't believe it. I don't believe that just happened. That's so annoying. I didn't even know the Hide Knights could do that. It's never happened to me before. I've always been quick enough to take them out. Uh, well, one good thing is the pig stays dead, so we don't have to deal with him again. We just have to deal with the other annoying little pain in the arses. I suppose I could shoot the archers off. Struggling to hit them. Okay. Get rid of him. I'm just going to have to go up there and kill them, aren't I? Otherwise, they're going to kill me. I should have kindled that bonfire as well back there, but oh well. Um, Right, let's try and avoid getting parried by the, uh, the Hyde Knight this time, shall we? Speaking of which... That's enough of that, thank you very much. And then there's one more here. No Titanite Shard this time. Okay, so this next bit, we need to be a little bit tactical with how we deal with this because we've got a mage that's above us called a channeler. Talk of the devil. Ugh. So what I suggest we do is piss this guy off. Well, aggro him. And then bring him down into the lower section of the undead parish. That way we can face him without the interference. And we'll deal with the mage in a moment. There we go. He's actually, although he looks big and scary, he's actually really easy to kill. And we get a Titanite shard for it. Right, now, time to deal with the channeler. So if we just come around the edge of this pillar here. Where, where is he? 
There he is, I see him. Okay, let me just... from here without getting hit. Whoops. There we go. So I can now hit him but he can't hit me. I knew there was a spot. Just had to get my positioning right. And once this channel dies he stays dead. There we go, he's down. Uh, if we make our way to the top of the throne room here we can see that there's a firekeep assault. Next, we're going to want to do, 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 do. we're going to want to just activate this lift a second, and this lift also goes towards getting back to the undead asylum in a bit as well. But we'll we'll get to that. takes us back to the final. But now that that's been activated we can go back up and that lift will now be permanently active so you can use it anytime you need. Okay so uh, so the next thing we're going to want to do is we're just going to go ahead and drop out here. Now there's going to be three guys here. One archer, two swordsmen. And we are going to be coming back into the Undead Parish very shortly but what I want to do quickly is we're just going to head down this way because there's another bonfire just down here and we're going to head down to it and just kindle it to get some more flasks. And then we will double back on ourselves and go back into the Undead Parish and see about um, dealing with the next boss fight which is the gargoyles fun little fight that we're going to be doing on the roof but uh, if we manage to successfully best them there is 10k of souls in it for us I believe so it's definitely worth doing so let's just reverse our hollowing because we have to be human in order to kindle I think I did mention that in one of my previous episodes uh, kindle now obviously we can only kindle once right now so I'll go ahead and do that uh, I have got a few points to spend as well mm, where should we chuck those I want to get my endurance up a bit more so I can move better that's better now I can move alright now we'll go ahead and make our way back down towards the, uh, sorry, up towards the Undead Parish. Now obviously because we've rested at the bonfire everything's going to have respawned, well except for the channeler and the big guy. So essentially the only thing that's going to have respawned that we killed is these three guys just outside here basically. And then obviously everything further back but we don't need to go through those guys again in order to progress so it's fine. I should have dealt with the archer first, that was my bad. Alright. So now we're going to go ahead and make our way up these stairs. There'll be another Hyde Knight on the stairs, so be ready for him. And then once we get around this corner, there's going to be a load of those little guys with the little daggers, so we need to be careful with how we approach them. careful with how we deal with these guys because obviously they can shred you in mere seconds if you're not careful. Ooh. 
Oh, come on. Well, we still have seven flasks. That's more than adequate to deal with the boss. But there is one other thing we need to deal with first before we tackle the boss. Otherwise, we're going to screw ourselves over. So first we'll get this large soul of a soldier, whatever it was called. And then we need to make our way up here. There's going to be another hide knight to deal with here. So we'll just get rid of him. Oh, and he's dropped some tight knight shards. Always useful. We'll keep those. And we're going to go ahead and make our way around this side a minute before we go and deal with what it is that we need to deal with. humanity if we come through here and up these stairs now this golden guy here he's an evil pain in the ass and if we don't kill him now he will kill our fire keeper back at firelink and it will cause us all sorts of problems however if we do let him kill our fire keeper we can get her soul back and resurrect her um, but I will show you that later. But instead, we are actually going to kill him right here, right now, hopefully. Or at least that's my plan, anyway. Be warned, though, he is quite strong. Why isn't my character moving the way I want him to? Let's go. Will you take the flask? Thank you. <laughs> Good God. Well, let me just come out here where there's a bit more room. I can see what I'm doing. Oh. Back up. We got a load of humanity and we also got a very useful ring which I am actually going to go ahead and use. Believe me it's worth it. So this is the ring of favour and protection. It boosts HP, stamina, equipment load but it does break when removed so if you're going to put it on don't remove it again unless absolutely necessary. I always keep it on uh, basically for the rest of the playthrough. I never take it off because um, it really does help. So we're going to go ahead and make our way up through here now. And you'll find Knight Solaire's sign just here. I don't know who that is. It's some randomer. Uh, but I don't need to summon up for this fight. I can, I can do it without. There's only one fight that I'll probably summon up Knight Solaire for, if I'm honest. Now, if we cut the tail off of this thing, we can get the Howlbeard from him. Let's see if he stays still long enough for me to actually hit it. Got it. Gargoyle Tail Axe, that's the one. Now, the sec there will be a second Gargoyle that will drop down, and his health bar will be determined by how much health bar this one has left. Ideally, we want to try to take out this first one as quickly as possible. The second gargoyle is actually relatively easy to deal with because he mainly just spews fire. Oh my god, what is going on with my character? He just rolled into that twice. He meant to roll the other way. Instead of... Oh, I don't know. Oh, that was my fault. I let my guard down too early. 
right. If I can just get behind him and go die. Because while he's flame grilling, he literally cannot move, so that's your time to strike. And once again, my character decides to just randomly do an emote, even though I didn't press the button for it. God knows why it's doing that. Right, so if we then make our way across to here, and up these ladders. It's quite a long ladder, and uh, when we come back down again, don't do what I did where I walked off the edge and just fell straight down by accident because I missed the ladder, I misstepped. I've done it on both ladders before, and I've gone plummeting over the edge of that and straight down into the forest below. Not pleasant. So, we'll go ahead and ring the bell. And there are two bells that we need to ring in total. So I'm just going to head and climb back down here. And I think that's pretty much going to be it for this episode. Although, just before I uh, uh, end the episode, I'll just show you two things. The first being this guy here, the Pardoner. This is the guy to go to if you've accidentally killed an NPC or hit an NPC that you didn't want to kill. By going to him, you can get yourself a absolution which will remove that problem and stop the NPC from attacking you. Also, you can learn a gesture from him, which is, well, what is it? Which I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, he's also a coven as well, I think. Or actually, no. You can uh, is he a coven? Oh, I can't remember. It's been a while. Uh, I mean, you can abandon the covenant that you're in from here. Uh, although I'm not in a covenant just yet. Uh, we can get purging stones as well. Actually, do you know what? I will grab just one purging stone because I know for a fact that one of the areas that we've got coming up is going to be an absolute nightmare. Uh, there's a couple of rings here. You can get the ring of sacrifice and the ring of sacrifice when it's equipped. Basically, if you die, uh, that ring will break instead and you won't lose anything. You won't lose any souls. And the other ring that was in there was the bleed ring, which I'm not going to bother with right now. And then the last thing I want to show you guys before I peace out. Whoops, oh sugar, missed the ladder, oh, sod it. It's only a little bit of damage, and everything's dead anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, oh yeah, no, I am going the right way. I mean, I could have dropped down, but I probably would have taken a bit of damage if I did, so I don't want to risk killing myself just yet. Uh, Been recording for 34 minutes. Yeah, I've got just enough time to squeeze this last little bit in. So ideally, I like to keep my videos between 30 and 35 minutes long, so um, they're sort of half decent length. So first things first, that bell we just rung is one of two, like I said, and once we rung both of the bells, it will open this door down the bottom here, which leads into Zen's fortress. And also outside the door here, we will find the Onion Knight, Cedric, I believe his name is. Okay, Zygmaier. Okay. 
to relieve him. For now, there's nothing more to be done with him. And if you follow his storyline, there are a few rewards to be had. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you guys is, we just come down here, we've got Andre the blacksmith. Now, we can't do a great deal with him right now because we haven't given him the end. I really wish people would stop putting orange soap stone, uh, soap there. Can't speak. Orange soap signs so close to things. It really just makes things irritating. Uh, so we're just going to purchase here. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. So we've got the weapon smith box, which lets us reinforce stuff. Well, weapons from our um, from our well from any bonfire. Really. So we're going to go ahead and spend the souls for that. Uh, the armor one does the armor, and then the repair box allows us to repair stuff as well from the bonfire. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. The crest of Artorius, uh, we will be getting that a bit later on, but not right now because we need twenty thousand souls for it, and we just don't have that. So we will be back, Andre. Cool your jets. Right, I'm actually going to end the episode here for now, then, folks. And we'll be picking things up next time where we're going to actually return to the Undead Asylum to finish off things there because there's a few things we need to go back and collect. So, I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now, folks.